Before getting into performing basic database operations, let us create a simple table by name users for now in a database. If you are using our labs, you will be getting a database and user which will be prefixed with your OS username and the password will be published by our portal. In my case, I am logging in as ITVST as user and hence the database name is ITVST underscore SMS underscore DB. Username is this one. You are seeing a hard coded password here. However, in your case, the password will be whatever is provided as part of the portal. I will also be changing the password once the user is created so that the password is not revealed for others. Make sure to use complex password if you are trying to set up these databases in your own environment. When it comes to running database commands, either you can use SQL magic command within Jupyter Notebook provided it is set up and integrated with Jupyter Notebook or you can use psql directly from the terminal by connecting to your host or you can actually set up SQL Alchemy and start using it. You can use the tool as per your preference as long as you have the credentials which have right permissions to create databases and uh, tables as well as users, you should be good to go. So in this case, I can use this command to connect to a remote Postgres server from the client. So the client is on my Ubuntu host and the database is running on Docker container. Even though the container is internal to this host, Still, it is kind of uh, simulating as if I am connecting uh, remotely. I have to specify the host name like this. Otherwise, it will try to connect to the local database which is running on the host itself if there is a database running on host. Also, we need to specify the port so that it can talk to the database in the Docker container. In my case, the database is set up using 5433 port as part of the Docker container. Actually, it is set up using 5432, but it is uh, published as 5433 on the host. That's why we have to use this. And then hyphen capital W will uh, prompt for the password. Now I'm entering the password. I'm inside the database. So either you can use psql from a remote machine like this. If your psql or postgres is running as part of the docker container, you can use this command to connect to that postgres database server using psql cli. In this case, you just have to replace your docker container name here and then psql hyphen capital U postgres which will let you connect as super user. Now I am connected as super user. You can see that it is psql 13.0 However, it is psql 12.4 because the Postgres client which is already set up in this host is a bit outdated compared to the Postgres version what we have as part of the server. That's why you see this discrepancy but 12.4 client is compatible with 13.0 and hence it will work without any issues. Once you are connected to database either by using SQL Alchemy or psql or whatever tool you want to use, you can actually create the database. Once again, I am reiterating if you are using our labs for practice, there might be database already with this name along with the user where the password is published through portal. You just use the database and user, don't try to create the database and user. Even as part of the projects, typically we don't create the database and users in higher environments other than the development. Even in development, typically architect will be taking care of it. Developers might not uh, set the standards and uh, start creating the databases by themselves. So I have created the database. I have created the user with password ITVST exclamation mark 23. I will be changing this password at a later point in time. If you are using some cloud-based environment uh, to take care of these uh, database operations using Postgres, make sure the password is a bit complicated. Once the database is created and user is created, we need to ensure that the permissions on the database exist to the user created and hence we have to run this to take care of that. Now we have the database and the user. I can actually connect to the uh, database and start creating the tables using Jupyter Hub based environment. If you want to use Jupyter Hub based environment, especially on our labs, you need to make sure that you run this and then you have to make sure that you use this uh, URL. However, in this, you have to change the username, password, as well as the database name, and then you, you are good to go. Now to validate, I can run this, and I should be able to see the list of tables from information schema.tables, to which we typically have access to whenever we create a database and uh, create a user and grant permissions on the database. Uh, you can see all the information schema tables here. As we haven't created any tables, we will not be seeing any user specific tables. You can also validate from here by running slash D. It will list the tables. And there are tables uh, which are created for other purposes here, but nothing related to users. And these are all under public. And as I have logged in as Postgres, I am able to see all these tables. If I come out of this and if I use the new user to connect to the database and if I try to run, it, run the slash D command, I will not be able to see these details. So in this case, as part of the psql-u, 
I, I can either use this one or this one. Whatever you want to use, you can use. However, in this case, I don't want to connect as Postgres. I want to connect as itversity underscore SMS underscore user underscore SMS underscore user. And the database name is nothing but itversity SMS underscore DB. It is very important to set the database name also because itversity SMS user do not have any permissions uh, on other databases than this. That's why we have to specify the database name also here. Now you can hit enter and you can actually enter the password and you should be able to connect to the database. And if I say slash D, you will not be seeing any tables here. Relation is nothing but a table. Once we create the table, we should be able to see the results. If you are using SQL alchemy based approach with the percentage SQL magic command, if your command has to be in multiple lines, you have to just use this percentage percentage SQL result underscore set. And then you have to have this double less than keys or characters. And then you should be able to create the table. This will take care of creating the table. We can validate by saying slash D here. Now we have users table and user ID sequence because user ID is of type serial. Uh, and primary key. You can also run the information schema dot tables where table name equal to users. As this is multi-line, the output is assigned to this variable called as result set. To see the details, you can actually run display of result set like this and you should be able to see the details here. This is how you can get started with creating the tables and validating them. As we have successfully created the database and the table, it is time for us to understand the nuances behind DDL, DML and DQL hands-on. We will get into those details. If you are using our labs, you might have created the table, you might not have created the database, but that is fine. You don't need to worry too much about creating the databases. As long as you are able to create the table and you will be able to use the table for insert, subdates, deletes and select, we are good to go.